good morning welcome to the garden so this morning I just wanted to come out and harvest some green beans so that's what I'll be doing and while I'm in the garden I love to enjoy the sights and the sounds of the garden and the beautiful flowers that I have blooming in the garden it's such a wonderful experience my pumpkin vine is coming out of the bed into the pathway and I'm gonna find a way to get them back in there um, if I can if I can't it'll just have to be here so today I'm gonna to share with you my green bean harvest it's early early morning and early in the morning I do like to come out with a, a, some type of long sleeve or a sweater and it's getting hot so once it starts to get hot I take it off and then I go and apply maybe a bug repellent because I'm telling you now these mosquitoes mosquitoes are gruesome let me show you the harvest there are many ways that you can grow green beans there are bush varieties and pole varieties we grew pole varieties here and we secured them using handmade teepee style trellises um, from broken branches from our yard um, cutting them down to size and securing them with twine at the top of the teepee we also dug little trenches for the legs and stuck them into the holes in the ground and then we compacted them in well with the actual soil so that the teepees wouldn't topple over Okay guys, I know the suspense is killing you and you wanted to see what that green bean harvest looked like. Well, here it is. I am very satisfied, very happy to see such a beautiful, beautiful harvest of green beans. So I tried to get a little close in for you so you could see the, um, the quality of the green beans. And, um, how beautiful they are. They're gonna be absolutely delicious. All right, so now on to planting the green beans. They're really easy to grow. If my children can do it, you can do it. So let's take a look at the space in there. Okay, so that's it. Now it's time for you to drop your seeds, right? So we used botanical interest seeds for these green beans. I'll be using a different variety along with these varieties this year. And there it is, our first bean. Okay. It's really easy, just dig about a one inch hole, place to about two beans in the hole per hole. And you can plant them a lot closer than we did. This first time around, we planted them about six inches apart, but this year we're gonna be planting them a lot closer. I'm gonna my bean pack it down and I'll cover it up and uh, yeah. Try to get a little bit more square footage out of our garden. My oldest son here has a different variety, the Blue Lake, and it done very well as well. As you can see, my son is covering up the bean, and that's all you do. You may be wondering, how many beans do I plant per person? Well, a good rule of thumb for planting in your garden would be about 10 to 15 beans per person. It will definitely benefit you in the long run. The more green beans you plant, the more you'll have. And then you'll also account for any bug damage or loss in your garden. How about giving our boys a thumbs up for learning how to grow their own food? Alright, make sure you label your beans and you know what you're planted. And we're going to go ahead and water them in well. My son chose to grab the watering can, but of course we did grab the water holes afterwards and water them in really, really well. Don't um, water them in so that the soil is completely soggy. The beans will rot in the ground, so you don't want to oversaturate the soil. 
just um, water them in well until the seedlings emerge and then you can water them because the seedlings need water. There's a good reason why you should protect the stems of your seedlings. I usually use like a plastic bottle and cut it into rings and I'll kind of secure the rings around the stem down into the ground so that the cutworms will not eat my seedlings. So very important, protect your seedlings and make sure you cover them. A lot of people may use foil or different methods like that. Um, I've just found that the plastic bottles are very doable. They stand up straight and they also are waterproof and weatherproof. And here I am just watering the garden in well. And after about two weeks, here we have some wonderful growth in the garden. You have to kind of guide the vines up the poles in the direction that you want them to go, but they just kind of figure it out <laughs> and um, they kind of lead themselves. You can guide them one way and you'll come back the next day and they'll be on a completely different pole. So it just depends. Sometimes they do what um, you want them to do and sometimes they do what they like to do. And as you can see, I use some twine, just wrapping it around the pole just to give um, the vines some more room to spread out and climb up the pole. Whenever you see those blooms developing on your plants, you know that your beans are sure to follow. they are little baby beans. All right so now on to the garden pest that you may encounter so be prepared. You may encounter the Mexican bean beetle. This is some Mexican bean beetle damage. We didn't have hardly any. I think this was the only leaf that I found because I had wonderful ladybugs in my garden and a lot more beneficial insects that were eliminating these pests from my garden. You'll also find some stink bugs here and there. If you do, you would want to eliminate them immediately because when they start laying eggs, they are amazingly productive and they will take over your garden. You also want to stay on the lookout for your yellow striped army worm or different varieties of cut worms because they will cut at the stem of your seedlings just as they emerge from the ground, they will destroy them. So you can find these worms, sometimes they'll, they'll burrow underneath the soil and they'll emerge later on um, during the day or times even during the evening. You can hand pick these pests off of your plants and then eliminate them in maybe some soapy water or you could spray your plants early morning before the sun comes out in a little neem oil. I did use some of the neem oil in my garden and I found that it did work really well. But really um, being proactive in your garden and just staying on top of it, you can actually hand pick and destroy a lot of these pests. And that is pretty much it. You can hand pick green beans. You don't have to cut them off the vines. Here I'm showing you that I can just snap them off with my finger and try not to destroy the actual branch though. You don't want to do that and just pick your green beans. All right guys, that does it for this video. I hope you all found some inspiration or motivation here and I hope you enjoy the video. So like this video if you like it and I hope you do subscribe if you are new and for all of my returning subscribers thank you so much for watching again thank you so much for commenting down below and giving us those likes we really do appreciate it don't forget to leave us a comment down below and tell us what you'll be growing this season if you're in our region we're around 7b and zone 8 so let us know what you'll be growing and we can't wait to hear from you grow something beautiful all right, guys, we'll see you on the next video. Happy gardening. Bye. Good job, Isaiah. 